Chapter 5. Ooze. The captain turned and strode away. Sorry, friends, Henry said to Jack and Annie, but the captain's in charge. He looked around. I see Joe and Tommy are helping the men bring up the catch now. As soon as they are free, I will ask them to take you back to shore. I am very sorry. That's okay, said Annie. You did what you could. Before you young people leave, perhaps you would like to see today's specimens? asked the professor. Sure, said Jack and Annie, together. Then come along, said the professor. Every single day we make new discoveries. Hurrying with Annie across the deck, Jack couldn't wait to see what had just been brought up from the deep. They followed Henry and the professor to a team of sailors pulling up large nets. The nets were shaped like giant bags with mops attached to the bottom. What are those mops for? asked Annie. They sweep up sea animals from the floor of the ocean, explained Henry. We pull them from pitch darkness into the light of day, said the professor. That must scare them, said Annie. But the professor didn't seem to hear her. Over the years, we've hauled up tens of thousands of specimens, he said. As the sailors dumped the bags onto the deck, Jack saw mostly mud. But lying in the mud were tiny, squirmy pink and yellow fish and fiery orange sea stars. No monsters there, huh? asked Annie. The professor looked at her. Not today, my dear, he said. I was just kidding, said Annie. Do you believe in monsters? Oh, well, the professor looked serious. The deep sea is very deep, my dear. It covers nearly three quarters of the world. So I say to myself, might it not indeed hold many mysterious creatures, including monsters? Good point, thought Jack. But don't be afraid, children, said the professor. Someday we'll catch all the monsters and study them. We will conquer our fears through knowledge, won't we, Henry? Yes, sir, said Henry. Conquer our fears through knowledge, the professor repeated his thought with enthusiasm. I shall add that to my lectures. Low thunder rolled in the sky. Jack looked up. Black clouds hovered overhead. A strong gust of wind swept over the deck. Attention, the captain shouted, heading toward them. A squall is headed our way. For now, take the children below to the main deck. Yes, sir, said Henry. He smiled at Jack and Annie. Well, friends, I suppose you get to stay with us for a while longer after all. Yay! Annie said softly. Only those on watch stay on deck, the captain shouted to his crew. Everyone else get below. Henry led Jack and Annie away, just as the rain began to pour down. Water dripped from Jack's hair and backpack and life vest as he and Annie followed Henry down a steep flight of stairs to a dimly lit hallway. Our ship was converted from a war vessel to a ship of sea laboratories, Henry said. The Navy removed 16 of the 18 guns on board to make room for them. Would you like to see mine? Oh, yes, said Jack. He couldn't wait to see an actual sea laboratory. Follow me. Henry unlocked a door and showed Jack and Annie into a large, dim room. There was a small skylight overhead. Rain poured against the glass. Henry struck a match and lit a couple of oil lamps. Shadows danced around the room. Jack smiled and let out a deep sigh. He loved the sea lab. Shelves were lined with hundreds of different sized bottles. The bottles were filled with floating blobs. In the middle of the room was a wooden table. It held maps, rulers, thermometers, bowls with gooey looking stuff, and a big microscope. Henry pointed at the microscope. Would you like to see something remarkable? He asked. Oh, yes, said Annie. She peered through the eyepiece. Wow, that's amazing, she breathed. Let me see, said Jack. He put his backpack down on the table and looked in the microscope. He saw the tiny skeleton of a seahorse. Cool, he said. That seahorse is no bigger than a grain of sugar, said Henry. But of course I'm fascinated by larger creatures as well. Why, just yesterday, I spent several hours studying the ear bone of a dolphin and the tooth of a shark. And what's in all those bottles? asked Annie. She pointed at the rows and rows of bottles on Henry's shelves. Many curiosities, said the scientist. 
That large one, for instance, holds a creature that looks like a giant sock. Some call it a blubberfish, but it's not a fish at all. It's made of millions of tiny sea creatures. Ew, said Annie. And there's a rare sea slug, said Henry. He pointed to a bright yellow blob floating in a clear liquid. Nice color, said Jack. We study whatever we bring up from the deep, said Henry. We measure the specimens and identify them. Then we preserve them in bottles of alcohol and label the bottles. So all those bottles are full of dead sea creatures, said Annie. Oh, no, many bottles are simply filled with ooze from the bottom of the sea, said Henry. Ooze, said Jack. The official name for mud, said Henry, smiling. Here, feel it. Henry picked up one of the plates on the table and held it out to Jack and Annie. They rubbed the sticky, wet mud between their fingers. Ooze is a good name for it, said Jack. Henry gave them a cloth to wipe their hands. Then he picked up a large book from the table. And here is the notebook where I transfer my drawings of natural history specimens, he said. He opened the book. Inside were beautiful watercolors of shells, plants, and butterflies. These are great, said Jack. Henry's notebook reminded him of the notebooks he'd seen in Leonardo da Vinci's studio. This is beautiful, said Annie. She reached across Henry's table and picked up a gleaming round seashell. The shell was white with curved reddish-brown lines. Yes, Henry said softly, my nautilus shell. Is this one of your specimens? asked Annie. No, said Henry. I don't consider that a specimen. It's more like a treasure. I'm afraid I grew quite fond of the little creature who once lived inside that shell. What did he do? asked Annie. Ah, he just swam around a small tub I had for him, said Henry. But he moved backwards. Rather funny. He filled himself with water and then squirted it out all over me. Henry smiled. I was quite sad when he died. I wished I had returned him to the sea. Henry put the shell down and let out a quiet sigh. Uh, silly to think that way now, I know. Not silly at all, said Annie. The ship's bell rang. Ah, time to go, said Henry. The captain runs a tight ship. It's against the rules to be late. So let us be off to the wardroom. What's the wardroom? Jack asked. That's where the scientists and naval officers eat, said Henry. Eat? Jack said weakly. The thought of food made him queasy again. Yes, said Henry. He blew out the two oil lamps. Come along. You must join us. It's lunchtime. <laughs>